In this video, we'll demonstrate how to build a small Streamlit application that lets a user upload a CSV file and then allows them to enter prompts that can be used to analyze the data in that CSV file. And we're going to use Pandas AI in order to take the query or the prompt that's been entered by the user and then send that to a language model that can then return a response based on the data. So we're going to set up a Streamlit UI that lets the user upload a file and then allows them to enter that prompt into a text widget and then sends that widget using Pandas AI to the language model. So let's get started. This is going to build on a previous video that I've done on Pandas AI, which you can see here in the GitHub repository. And again, the data that we're going to work with in this video, it's this Titanic data set. I'll leave a link below the video to this data. And we're also going to use Streamlit in this video. And this is an open source Python library that makes it easy to create and share beautiful custom web apps for machine learning and data science. So this is a library that allows you to build web apps, but it's much more simple to do this in Streamlit than it is in Django or Flask. You can write code in a simple Python script top to bottom and it's going to create a web application from that content. So we're going to see how to do that in this video and we're going to use Pandas AI in order to analyze the data that a user uploads. So let's get started. I have VS Code open here and we have a file called main.py and we also have a .n file here and if we open that you can see we have a key here called OpenAI API key. We're going to need to interact with the APIs provided by OpenAI. So we are going to need an API key and you can get one of these keys at platform.openai.com and you can see I have two keys here. And what we're gonna do later in the video is add our secret key or API key to this file. And then we're gonna load it into the main.py using the python.env module. Now, as you can see below, we have a virtual environment activated and we're gonna install some Python libraries that are gonna let us work in this tutorial. So I'm gonna paste a command here and it's the pip install command and we're installing Streamlit, Pandas AI and also the python.env module that will allow us to read the values from that .env file. So let's install these just now. And what we're gonna to do to start with is from this .env library that we've just installed, we're going to import a method called load.env and we're also going to import the OS module from Python standard library as well. Now, all we need to do is call this load.n function and it's going to take any keys and values in this .n file and it's going to load them into the operating system's environment variables. So what we're going to do is call this function and after we've called the function we can set an API key variable and we're going to set that equal to the os.environ and we're going to look for the environment variable with the name specified here in the .n file and that's the openai API key. So let's paste that in here and that should return to us that value of that variable. So if we then print this API key to the terminal and execute the script main.py, you can see we get the value my OpenAI key, which matches the value specified in the .n file. Now what I'm going to do now is change this value to my own OpenAI key, and then we're going to go back to main.py and we're going to start building a UI with Streamlit. So at the top, we're going to import Streamlit as ST, and this is a standard import for Streamlit, much like you would import pandas as PD or NumPy as NP. We import Streamlit and we give it the namespace of ST. And then what we're going to do to start with, I'm going to remove this print statement and we're going to use a function called st.title, so the streamlit.title function. So as you can see, this displays text in title formatting. So what we're going to pass as the title to this streamlit application is prompt driven analysis with pandas AI. So let's do that. And then what we're going to do is go to the command line where we have access to a streamlit command line tool. And this command line tool is available when you install Streamlit. And we have access to a command called run, which will run a Python script as a Streamlit application. So let's use the Streamlit run command. And all we need to specify after that is the name of the script that we want to run. In our case, it's main.py. And that's going to run that script and load a browser with that particular application. And this is the browser page that's been loaded. You can see the title that we entered, prompt driven analysis with pandas AI. And that title is rendered by the streamlet.title function. And we can call many other streamlet functions in order to let users interact with this page and to display items on the page. And we're gonna see that now. We're gonna display a widget that will allow a user to upload a file to the page. So I'm gonna go back to the Streamlit documentation and we have here a widget called File Uploader. So we're gonna specify a file uploader widget and we're gonna also give it a type here. And this type is an array that determines the allowed extensions that you can upload. For example, if you were just uploading images, you might limit that to PNG and JPEG. In our case, we are uploading a data file, a CSV file. So we're going to limit the allowed extensions to CSV files. So let's go back to VS Code and we're gonna see how to do that just now. So below our title call, we're gonna use the st.file uploader widget. And we give that uploader a label that we're going to see on the UI. And in our case, I'm gonna give it a label of upload a CSV file for analysis. And then we can use that type keyword argument that we saw in the documentation. 
and that's a list where we can specify the allowed extensions. So we're going to specify only CSV files. And I'm going to remove some of these spaces and just clean this up a little. And let's go back to the browser now. If we go back to our application and refresh the page, you can see we now have a file upload widget that's displayed below the title. And if we click this widget, we can then select a file from our local file system and upload that to the Streamlit application. So I'm going to click the widget and we're going to select this titanic.csv file that we worked with in the last video. And I've left a link to that in the description below the video. You can see that when we select that, we have the file displayed here, but nothing else is happening. So now we're going to handle what we want to achieve when a user actually selects a file. So what we want to do is go back to VS Code. Now when a user uploads a file, this file uploader will return that file to the caller. So what I'm going to do is just below this, I'm going to store this in a variable called uploaded file and we'll set that equal to the file uploader. And when a user uploads a file, it's going to be stored in that variable. And then we can create an if statement just below here and we can check if the uploaded file is not none. And what we want to do, we know it's a CSV file that's been uploaded. In that case, we want to use pandas to read the CSV file into a pandas data frame. So before we write the if statement at the top here, I'm going to import pandas as PD. And then just below the if statement, we can create a variable called data frame. And that's going to be equal to the pandas.readCSV function. And we can pass the uploaded file to that function. So that will create a pandas data frame. And we can display the head of that data frame in our Streamlit application with the st.write function. And as you can see in the description here, the streamlit.write function is the Swiss army knife of streamlit commands. It will do different things depending on what you throw at it. So we're going to throw a data frame at it and we're going to use the data frame.head call and we're going to display the first three rows of the data frame by passing the parameter of three in there. So let's now save this file and go back to the UI and refresh this page. If we now select this Titanic file, when we select that, you can see that below we get a data frame appearing after that's been uploaded. Now, so far, this is working fine. We're able to let a user select a file and upload that file. And then we convert that file to a pandas data frame and display the head of the data frame. But what we actually want to do is we want to let the user enter a prompt and then we want to use pandas AI to attach that prompt to a request to OpenAI that will also attach the data frame. So it's going to use the data from the data frame as well as the user's prompt in order to try and answer the questions essentially of that data frame. Now, a small caveat here, of course, when you're sending data to OpenAI, you are sending that data across an API and across the network to this company. So you might want to be careful what you're sending because by default, this is not going to be private. There are private LLMs out there. And if you're interested, we could maybe do a video on something like Open Assistant. But for now, what we're going to do is go back to VS Code and underneath the data frame, we're going to create a prompt for the user to type in their particular input that we're going to send to OpenAI. So what we're going to do here is create a variable called prompt. And we're going to set that equal to another streamlit widget. And this is a streamlit.text area widget. And we can pass a string to that. And that's going to be enter your prompt. So let's see how that will change our application. If we go back and refresh this page, again, we need to select the file and upload that file. And as you can see, we get back the data frame below, but now we have a prompt as well. And now we can type in something that we want to send to OpenAI. So we can type into this prompt, but we have no way of submitting this. So we need a button just below that. And Streamlit has a button widget that we can use. And what we're going to do is we're going to set that equal to an if statement again. And we're going to use the streamlit.button widget. And that takes a label again. So we're going to use the label of generate. And if the button is clicked, this if statement is going to evaluate to true. Otherwise, it will evaluate to false. This will display the button on the page and it allows you to attach some logic depending on whether or not the button was clicked. So if the button was clicked, we go into the if statement and we can check whether or not we have a prompt. By default, that will be none until the user enters some text. And if there is a prompt, for now, we're just going to write to the page that Pandas AI is generating an answer. So please wait. And if there's no prompt, if the user has clicked the button, but there's no text to send, then we go into the else statement. And I'm going to use the streamlit.warning function here with the warning message to enter a prompt. So this is the last step in setting up our Streamlit UI for this task. Let's go back to the page and refresh this page. We're going to select the Titanic data. And as you can see now, we have the prompt below and we have a button. So if we click generate without entering any text, we get back the warning message, please enter a prompt. If we now enter a generic prompt, you can see we have the text that Pandas AI is generating an answer. So we're using the Streamlit button and we're using some conditional logic within that button. Now what we want to do is, if we go back to VS Code here, if we have a prompt, rather than just this streamlit.write function, we want to actually use Pandas AI. 
and we want to take that prompt and apply it to the data frame and see what kind of answers we get back from the language model. Now what I'm going to do is go to the documentation for Pandas AI or rather the GitHub page and we're going to scroll down to the usage section and we have a few imports that I want to bring in. So for example from Pandas AI we can import this Pandas AI object. We're going to do that at the top of the file here and we're also going to import another object. I'm going to copy this import here and I'm going to paste that again at the top of the file. So what we're doing here is we're importing the OpenAI object from the OpenAI module of Pandas as AI and what we can do when we load the environment variable for the API key below that I'm going to create a variable called LLM and we're going to instantiate the OpenAI object and that can take a parameter of API token which we can pass and that's the API key that we read in from the environment file. So that will create this LLM object that we can then pass to Pandas AI. So what we're going to do now is create a variable called Pandas AI and we can instantiate that Pandas AI object that we've imported on line 5 and all we need to do is pass the language model, the OpenAI object that we've instantiated to the Pandas AI object and that will give us back this variable here that we can then use and we can then attach a prompt to the run method of that variable. So let's now go back down to our if statement in the button here and while we are generating an answer what we can actually do below that is use the pandas AI object that we've instantiated and that has a run method and the first parameter to the run method is the data frame that's just df and the second parameter here is the prompt. Now the prompt that we're going to use here is the prompt that's been entered by the user and that's this prompt here that we have in the if statement and it's generated from this text area widget in Streamlit. And what we want to do when we get a response back from the API, we just want to write that out to the Streamlit UI. So we can use the streamlit.write function to write out whatever we get back from OpenAI to the user interface. So let's save this Streamlit script and refresh this page. If we now select the Titanic file and we have the data frame below and I'm going to enter a prompt, I'm going to paste a message in here. Who was more likely to survive, males or females, and how much more likely? If we hit generate, we get the message that Pandas AI is generating an answer. And at the moment, what's going on is that we're sending a request to the OpenAI APIs and we're interacting with the language model and we're waiting on the response. Now, this can take some time and I've also hit some errors where the models are overloaded. But the answer that we're getting back below here in this case is that based on the data, females were almost 55% more likely to survive than males. So if you were on the Titanic, being a female would have increased your chances of survival. So that's a reasonable answer to this query, but you may need to wait a little while to get that response. Now what we can also do is because we're waiting and essentially doing nothing, we have a message here, but we can actually generate a spinner instead. Streamlit has a widget for spinners, so what I'm going to do is use a with context manager here, and we're going to say with streamlit.spinner, and we can give the spinner some text that is going to be displayed while the request is in flight. And I'm also going to remove this streamlit.write call below here. And we can move the call to pandasai.run into this block here with the spinner. So let's quickly go over this. What we have here is a button that when we click it, if there is a prompt being entered into the text area, what's going to happen is we have a spinner displayed and we're going to send an API request using the pandasai.run method. We're going to send the data frame along with the prompt. And when we get a response, we're going to display that on the page with the streamlit.write function. And the spinner is going to be obviously displayed only while the request is in flight. So let's go back to the UI and refresh this page. We're going to upload again this Titanic file and this time we're going to enter a different prompt. What was the average fare price? Now fare is one of the columns in this data frame. You can see it here and this is the price that the passengers paid to get onto the Titanic. So when we hit generate here, it's going to show a spinner this time with the text generating a response. And you can see it quickly generated that response where the average fare price was around 32.20. Now if we want to verify that we can go back to VS Code and just at the top here after we've read in the data frame I'm going to write a statement here that's going to write out to our UI the average fare price. So what we're going to do is take the data frame, we're going to index in at the fare column and we can call the dot mean function to get that average. So let's now go back to the application and again refresh the page. Now when we select the Titanic data set you can see that we get back to the UI the average fare price and it's 32.2. To, and that matches what Pandas AI gave us back in the previous query. So you can see the power of this kind of query based or prompt based interface. For people that do not write code, do not write Python or Pandas code, you can then just simply enter conversational text and Pandas AI is then going to send that prompt along with the data to OpenAI and then you get back a response that very often works well for the question you asked. 
but it's not perfect. I've had some answers that don't really make sense. It depends what you ask. If you ask it something very general, it might not give you a good answer. Now I'm going to try asking a very general question of this data. So let's ask this question. Give me a summary of this data set. If we generate that response, let's see what OpenAI gives us back based on that prompt. And in this case, it's actually given us back quite a good answer. It tells us that the data set contains information about passengers on the Titanic, including their ID, whether they survived or not, and so on. And it gives us some summary statistics of the data. For example, there were 891 passengers in total. The average age was 29.7 years old, and the average fare was 32.2. And it also tells us that about 38% of passengers survived the sinking of the ship. So it's got some sort of context as well about this data. So the power of this kind of interface is that you can let your users upload any file that they want as long as it's a CSV file in this case that has some structured data and then you can provide a prompt interface that allows those users to ask questions of that data and users can then get information about the data without having to know anything about Python without having to know anything even about Excel or CSV files they can just upload the file and then ask questions now as you've seen in the previous video we can also use plots with pandas AI I'm going to try and do that just now, but we have a small problem here, and that's that matplotlib is what's used behind the scenes to actually render those plots, and I don't really know how to render matplotlib plots on a browser natively. In the previous video, we used a Jupyter Notebook, and notebooks have matplotlib support out of the box. Matplotlib has a backend that is well integrated with these notebooks. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the tkinter backend. tkinter is a Python standard library module that you can use to build user interfaces on operating systems. It's not web-based, it's actually native to the operating system, and it's built into Python's standard library. Now, matplotlib does have a backend for tkinter. What I'm going to do is go to the file here at the top, where we have the imports and I'm going to import matplotlib here and once we've imported matplotlib we can call the matplotlib.use function and we can set the back end here as it says on the VS Code pop-up. This function will select the back end that's used for rendering these charts and if we scroll down you can see the available back ends. The one that we're going to use is this one here, tkag, that stands for tkinter and you can see different back ends for example the nbag which is used in Jupyter Notebooks. So we're going to put tkag in here as the back end and then when we use a prompt that asks to generate a chart it's going to use this back end and it's going to display the chart on a window on our operating system. Now if you do know how to render a chart that's coming back from the pandas AI.run method using Streamlit, please let me know in the comments. It'd be interesting to see that. I know that Streamlit does have this pyplot function for example and you can display charts using Streamlit and matplotlib but in my case this didn't work with what was returned from the function. So what I'm going to do instead is simply use tkinter here and render it on a window on the browser. So that was a quick detour into why we need a different backend in my case simply because I don't know how to do this on a browser but what we're going to do now is go back to our user interface and we're going to select this titanic data set and the prompt this time is going to be plot the survival counts for males and females so let's hit generate and we're going to see what OpenAI returns for this prompt and the goal here of course is that we're going to be able to generate a plot based simply on text that's input by any users that are using our application. Now we have a window opened here, you can see it at the bottom maybe. I'm going to bring that into this page here and we have a very basic bar chart here displaying the total survivor counts and the total number of people that died for both females and males. So that's how we can generate a chart using a prompt that's put into this text area and we display that on a window using tkinter as the matplotlib backend. So this has been a quick video displaying how we can integrate Pandas AI and its backend calls to OpenAI with a Streamlit interface. If you're interested in an extension of this, please let me know in the comments. I have some other ideas if people are interested and we could also explore how to integrate this with Django or other web frameworks as well as Streamlit. Let me know if you're interested. Thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, please like and subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next video.